Sometimes you come across a game that makes you wonder, what the hell is this thing? I mean, I reviewed a lot of odd things involving treasure hunting ducks, humanoid ninja reptiles, and perhaps oddest of all, a small blonde kid fighting off Daniel Stern and Joe Pesci with Christmas decorations. But I'll tell you, this latest game is a doozy. This is Skyblazer, a 1994 action platformer that stars some sort of a liberal ninja gymnast in desperate need of a haircut? How can you tell he's a liberal? Well, just look at his main attack. He just stands there pointing at things about how unjust they are. Clearly not a libertarian man of action like myself. You won't catch me just standing around pointing at things. Now, I know what you're thinking. That's clearly a picture of me pointing at something. But what I'm actually doing is pointing out how great the free market is. The very same free market that allowed this game to come to store shelves. Developed by Ukiyote, Skyblazer sees you taking on the role of Sky as he attempts to rescue a sorceress from some sort of demon god. It doesn't take long, though, until you're nearly beaten to death by this forearm monstrosity, and your lifeless corpse is picked up and dragged away by hunchback Hugh Downs over here. Not only did you not ask for him to save your life, but he also starts refilling your energy, extending your life bar, and giving it passwords. Excuse me, but I didn't ask for your government welfare program. I'm fully capable of taking care of myself. And that's the point of this game, really. You need to travel the world, gaining new powers so that you can confront the being that previously attempted to kill you. Many of these powers are obtained by fighting a series of bosses in their various towers or palaces, and once you defeat them, their power is yours. So there's a steadfast libertarian principle right there, gaining assets through hostile corporate uh, enemy takeovers. What you'll quickly find, though, is that of the powers you obtain, only a few of them are incredibly useful. This Comet Dash, for example, is not only effective to use as a power, but it's also used for some puzzle solving in terms of navigating around levels. There's also the Heal spell, which allows you to restore health at the cost of a couple of magic points. So much for free universal healthcare. But even if most of your powers aren't incredibly useful, Sky is still some sort of circus ninja acrobat. He has a powerful jump, and the ability to cling to and climb up various surfaces. And oh, also he can fly. But not all the time. Apparently he's only able to fly if a screen is already moving. This somehow causes his powers of flight to activate. Of course, if you could fly all the time, it would probably make Sky's quest a bit too easy. But then again, there are things that make this game pretty easy to begin with. Sky Blazer is very generous with extra lives. Collecting 100 gems will grant you a 1-up, but a majority of the gems you find are large ones that grant you 10 at a time. Then there are actual 1-ups that you can pick up, and they respawn upon your death or exiting and entering a room. Here's one location early on in the game, where you can enter a room, pick up some gems, grab a 1-up, leave, come back, and repeat the process. And here's another location later on, where all you have to do is swim to the left, swim back to the door, and repeat. It's not enough that the old man wanted to give me handouts, but now this game is trying to force-feed me 1-ups like a chicken at a KFC poultry farm. Now, as you know, thanks to my award-winning tenure on 2020, where I was definitely not slapped twice in the face by a professional wrestler, I'm not just a libertarian, I'm a consumer reporter. Because of that, I have to ask the question about whether or not Skyblazer is worth your time and money. Well, for starters, one of the things I can say is that this game has a pretty excellent presentation. It's graphically beautiful, with fluid animation, and a uniquely stunning soundtrack by Harumi Fujita, who was also responsible for the great music on Chippendale Rescue Rangers on the NES, Ghosts and Goblins, and Tomba on the PlayStation. Many of the game's bosses, enemies, and settings draw upon elements of Hindu mythology, and the music often reflects this through instrumentation that sounds more distinctly Indian or Middle Eastern, with some sitar and syncopated percussion. Oh, <laughs> what's that? Didn't think the Stas knew what syncopation and music is? Well, that comes from my years working as a producer and manager for the 1970s girl group, the Stasettes. You may recall our number one hit, Dirty Deeds Done for a Consistent Profit Margin. Anyway, the point is that this game has a strong presentation and plays well too. The controls are mostly fluid, though the hit detection can be a little off sometimes. Sky's pointing at things requires him to get a bit too close to enemies, sometimes causing you to take damage instead. All that being said, it's really a mild quibble among a list of standout qualities. So is Sky Blazer worth playing? Yeah, it actually is. It provides a fair challenge, and with the number of extra lives it gives out to you, 
it actually gives off the sense that the game wants you to beat it. It wants you to see the unique boss battles it has waiting for you. It wants you to see all it has to offer. Almost as if it's self-aware. Like it's sentient. But no. It, it can't be. It's too soon, right? That doesn't happen until later. The war didn't happen yet. N not in this timeline. Did it stem from this? Is this the source code? They never knew. They never suspected it. It all makes sense now. Every bit of it. But is Skyblazer libertarian? Well, in a way, the actual production of the game itself is. There are some strong similarities between this title and Uki Yote's previous game, Hook. Reusing the game engine to create a unique intellectual property is a smart decision, especially when the game can turn out this strong. But on the other hand, in-game, it does dole out enough handouts to bankrupt a small country. Maybe it all comes down to the point of the story. Your character is essentially powering up to defeat a god. And maybe that's just a parable to libertarianism itself. You, a small member of the city-state, amassing more power and wealth until you're able to topple the biggest authoritarian of all, a theocratic government? And if that's not libertarian, I don't know what is. But then again, I'm not some flying ninja gymnast who clings to walls and points at things, so what do I know? Give me a break. 